What the f*** is going on? Hey everybody, I'm Andrew Broussard and I'm here to give you a product demonstration of the new standard compression system for use with your threadless forks and your threadless headset. Now here today, I have the first fully functioning prototype of the standard compression system. Proto scooters, inventors, visionaries, street guards, the ultimate sponsor, but to some, Proto has become a confusing rift of tales waiting to be told. So today, we're going to be telling some of those stories in the hope to explore and understand the past, present, and potential future. Proto's founder, Andrew Broussard, started the company back in 2008. He invented the SCS, the TDI DEX system. There's no doubt that it screams knowledge, creativity, and originality. All these things Proto has been known for since its conception. Broussard's vision for Proto has transpired throughout the past decade with projects such as Proto Catalyst, Armageddon, Fun and Easy, Intermission, and Reincarnate. These were and remain timeless classics in the scooter world, but that's how the consumer perceives it. Traveling across countless cities, countries, continents, all comes with a cost. And that cost may be potentially in the tens, maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars. But who pays? The company. How do they have money? They sell product. Who's responsible for the upkeep of the company's reputation? The riders. And what are the riders doing? Well, honestly, in this case, not a whole lot. Brandon Kilbury, Elma Ferreres, yeah, I can't. Alex Steedman, John Reyes, Dylan Casson, Chima Cardenas, Dan Barrett, Steven Sanchez, alongside the Godfather Broussard, set out to show what Proto was really all about in the Catalyst DVD. This became a stamp on the community, representing the street scene's desire to be the main center front of our sport. That love and devotion lived on despite many team member adjustments with following projects Armageddon and Reincarnate. Regardless of changes, Proto's image has stayed the same all up until about mid-2017, also known as vlogging season. Breakout writers such as Tana Fox, The Funk Bros, along with smaller acts such as Claudius Vitesse, Raymond Warner, and, well, yours truly, Scooter Brad. We all took part in Scootering's biggest social media movement of all time. Blogging season propelled Scootering to grow to all new heights. And while more and more scooter riders joined our already gigantic clan, the corporate side of scootering endured massive changes as well. Street companies like Proto and TSI really took a knock with the undeniable domination of people like Envy, Root Industries, Apex Pro Scooters, and so on. It was only really until the Sydney streets became the visual playground for the likes of Sean Desi, Jack Dow and Co when quote unquote street started to take a more mainstream comeback in the scooter scene. Unfortunately for Proto during this time, the customer's need for watchable content was entirely converted from the highly anticipated 
yet irregular releases of video parts, to the consistent yet almost oversaturated release of vlogging content. This is a key turning point of the entire scooter industry. I can't stress enough when I say that the desire for a specific type of content is completely different here in 2019 as it was in 2009 or even anywhere up until 2015. As I mentioned, the content format of scootering has completely shifted, leaving companies who don't keep up to the change on the chopping block. And that means riders too. Maybe this name will ring a bell. Matt McKean. Matt McKean is one of the most historically known riders of all time. While Matt has kept to himself over the past decade, his name now arises with the stir-up of this proto situation. He's never really been one to post a whole lot of content. With the new release of Matt McKean's The Passage Part, we can see that the dude is still alive and kicking. But the fact that we're now questioning his existence in the scooter community is exactly why we're diving down this rabbit hole in the first place. I first started scooter riding in 2000. Um, I was in Vancouver, Canada with my family and then uh, we were just on the boardwalk and I saw some guys jumping like a five stair on a scooter and I was like, holy shit, I need to get one of those. And then um, 10th birthday, I got a Razor and then I've been scootering ever since. No one scootered at the time, you know? So it was all like, I was just into all these different extreme sports. Like I was like into snowboarding and skateboarding and biking. And I just kind of found my way to scooters because it was kind of like a, I guess, like the medium of it all. The perfect hybrid of all these sports. McKean was officially welcomed to Proto on May 20th, 2015, after joining neighboring company River Wheel Co. shortly before this on January 6th. Later on, the partnership saw the release of the Matt McKean River Rapid Wheels and the Lightbringer Proto SCS, two very clean signature products that would sell extremely well throughout the community due to Matt's long-term commitment to the core scene. After four years of video parts, DVD features, good times, and most likely some bad, McKean announced his departure from Proto on February 12, 2019 to the shock of many. He is still currently riding for Riverco, meaning that his relationship with Proto, Broussard, and TGE distribution is for the most part still healthy and intact. Now look, McKean, he's not a vlogger. He's hardly an Instagram enthusiast, but he is a quality showman in the video parts. If this was 2013, he would be any company's ideal candidate for sponsorship. But this is 2019, where kids care more about how many wheels you can fit on an axle than they do about anything else that isn't titled with all caps. I dislike the content shift just as much as the next person. But I have accepted that this is the way that things are now. And I try my absolute best to produce content that reflects as much core scootering as possible to ensure that some of you viewers out there will forever have a deep love for core scooter content. The prerequisite to joining Proto was always make a crazy video part, but video parts don't sell enough product anymore. Someone's gotta give. Here's where things get a little complicated. Anyone who rides for, rode for, or works within Hella Grip, River Wheel Co, and or Proto are all connected by TGE Distribution. Without the manufacturing slash distribution center, none of these companies would hereafter exist. And Andrew is in a grand position when it comes to what sub-brands are produced under his roof. Because one, 
Andrew and his project's reputation is at the pinnacle of scootering already. Practically anything Andrew releases will sell and will sell fast. Two, he produces the highest possible quality of product with his own machinery in the United States. This only furthers our first point. Not only is the stuff going to sell, but it's actually superb quality product. Third and finally, simply put, Andrew is the king. And as Uncle Ben would say, with great power comes great responsibility. And I feel there is no one more responsible than Andrew. And with that trust comes a lot of pressure when having to make the cutthroat decisions to maintain his business's success. And when I say cutthroat, I mean cutthroat. There are people right at this very moment leaving comments on Proto Scooter's social media accounts when their riders leave saying, Proto is dying, Proto is dead. The riders and the community even as a whole do not dictate whether or not a company dies. The other brands, the other distribution centers, the retailers, they are the ones that buy the product from Proto and then sell it to you. But even then, Andrew could still keep things afloat all on his own. This is how commerce works. Regardless of whether a rider leaves the brand or not, no matter how long they rode for the brand, no matter how much they did for the brand, that brand will not cease to exist because of that issue. Ryan Williams left Mad Gear after eight years. Max Peters left Envy after eight years. Brendan Smith left Farzan after about seven. And all these companies are still kicking. Six days between posts. Seven days. Six days. Nine days. Some of the gaps between these posts on Instagram are massive. Coming from recently departed Parish Isaacs, one post is marked May 5th. The next scootering post on his Instagram, June 1st. The next following that, June 21st. This is simply not enough content to meet post requirements for a professional sponsorship. Street riders are stereotypically against the vlogging aspect of scooter riding, but those same riders fail to realize that sales come from consumers. And like the classic saying goes, the customer is always right. The only way for street activists to achieve their goal of video parts rule is to sway the public opinion on the matter, which is much easier said than done. Video parts take months to compile and produce, whereas a vlog can be filmed in a matter of minutes, a matter of hours, posted in a single day, day after day, 365 days a year. The battle is practically already lost. I can't speak for everyone associated with Proto, but my following assumption won't be far from the truth. Some Proto writers don't believe in posting daily content to obtain sales. They seem to have this sense of entitlement about them. Although Broussard won't tell you this directly, but he was absolutely putting pressure on his rider employees to produce more content in order to upkeep sales. But nobody stood up to the plate. Zach Martin, beloved pro rider, has posted 11 pieces of scooter related content this year in seven months. Parrish Isaacs did only slightly better with 16 posts before his departure. Jake Sorensen, although has now left Proto, posted 31 pieces of scootering content since the start of the year. Kirk Svensson, the worst offender of them all, has posted a measly six Instagram clips in seven months. Chima Cardines has posted 78 pieces of scooter content this year. And I bet you didn't even know that. Hell, I didn't know until I researched this video. It doesn't matter how good you are. It doesn't matter how much industry clout you have. It doesn't matter. What matters is who is ready to put in the work to propel the company to victory. Chema Cardenas. Three sets of signature wheels in. First the teal, then the red, 
Now the Chocoholic signature grippers. This guy, you might consider him to be less relevant in the scooter community, but goes to show that not everything is about Instagram clout. A steady, consistent amount of output as a professional can reap the big returns like a triple set of SIG wheels, an SCS clamp, and a monthly paycheck. Tell me what you want more, Instagram clout that's worthless or a physical paycheck? I don't know about you, but I'm definitely copping the paycheck. But apparently the paycheck isn't enough for some. Jake Sorensen, Parrish Isaacs both have left Proto because they didn't want to adapt to the new age of scooter content. They want to stay in the past. Maybe Parrish knew, maybe he dubbed his SIG wheels Time's Up because he knew that time was up for his category of scooter content. He will not adapt, he did not adapt, he no longer rides for the company. Jake Sorensen, slump grippers. Another piece of self-reflective behavior, slumped sloths, laziness, lack of Instagram activity, these things all go hand in hand completely subconsciously without the consumer even realizing until now. Less than 20 posts in seven months, that's an average of three posts per month, one every 10 days. You sitting there at home right now, I bet you post on your Instagram account more than these guys do. And I know that there are hundreds of scooter riders watching this video right now thinking I could do better. I would do better. I would post more. I would be more committed. I would do so much for Proto. I would do anything. So would I. But would they? It doesn't seem like they would. Kirk Svensson posted his departure claiming that scooter companies at large no longer value thoughtful, creative, and truly self-expressive riding. This is simply not true. Proto absolutely supports the creation of full-length feature films, otherwise they wouldn't have made them year after year after year for the past decade. There is no doubt in my mind whatsoever that Proto will produce another full-length sometime soon. How does Kirk as a writer expect Proto to finance a trip for him and his friends to produce a feature-length scooter film when the most populated post on his page this year is him leaving his sponsor. The only problem standing in the way of this production is the writers failing to adapt to the new form of media that is present in 2019. Thankfully, some people have. Chima Cardenas has proven himself worthy of continuously writing for Proto, despite whether or not people think he has a lack of ability, a lack of clout, a lack of relevancy throughout the wider community. It doesn't matter. He has proven himself to be a committed representation of the Proto brand. And Broussard is obviously aware of that and is continuously rewarding Chima with new signature colorways, meaning more money in Chima's pocket at the end of the week. Take John Reyes, for example. He, like many others, started out with Proto, moved on to Phoenix, and now rides for Envy, producing an astronomical amount of content, keeping his sponsor happy across a multitude of platforms. It's safe to say that he is a true professional and is well off from making a living out of riding scooters. That is the type of rider that we should be aspiring to be. With flat edits one to five, this guy has shown that he can make quality, thought out content regarding scooters. He also kills it on Instagram, has a massive YouTube channel, and brings in brand deals like no one else. He is a hard worker and would never in 2019 think of ghosting to work on another sixth flat edit. And no doubt he is working on that as time goes on, but he has to maintain the modern professionalism that is required by this sport in this day and age to do so. You can do both. 
Nobody is saying that you can't do both. I don't want full length videos left in the past either, but you do have to accept that there is a new media format right now. The logical choice is to use those new media formats and platforms to then direct viewership to your creative outlet that is a full length scooter film or whatever else you believe in. Kai Saunders, Juzzy Carter, two world renowned writers who do make quality video parts and have a solid upkeep of content on their Instagram pages and other platforms, which they then use later on to drive viewership towards their video parts. Super core cool street writers think that they're entitled to a paycheck without all this extra work. But guess what? If you want to be a professional, you got to freaking act like one dog and earn that coin. But Scooter Rad, why are you so obsessed with money? Money this, money that, money, money, money. If you're not already on board at this point, let me break it down for you. Money makes the world go round. Scootering, whether you have little or an insane amount of passion for it, it is indeed a multi-million dollar industry. Those who have helped found it and have pushed it to where it is today have every right to make a living in doing so. Most scooter riders are generically aged between 10 to 16 years of age. The money side of things has little impact on younger riders' mindsets because they don't understand what living in the harsh adult reality of this world is actually like. Kids don't pay rent. Kids don't pay power bills or phone services, gas, water, heating, subscriptions, car repairs, and so whether the content is actually interesting, that depends on the subject watching it. Let me tell you, the kids' side of content in scootering is covered, but the, and hell, I'll even list myself with confidence. Writers like Jake Sorensen and Parrish, again, amazing writers, but it's a cold hard fact that they no longer ride for Proto because they failed to follow superior orders from their boss, Andrew Broussard, by not producing a substantial amount of content representing the brand. That is not my opinion. That is not an assumption. This is a cold, hard fact. And the reason I feel responsible to share this information is because what happened to doing research? What happened to integrity? Just be a scooter rider and accept trust in those who have stepped up to create and sustain this community in the form of shops, content feeds, repost pages, writer owned brands, and even corporate brands. There will forever be some conflict. And that's a fact of life. But let's not forget who pushed this sport onto the starting grid. Let's show love for rider-owned brands. Let's reward the riders who are committed to the success of their partner brands and wave goodbye to those who have stepped down off the ladder to glory. I, like Broussard, have been in this game well over 10 years now. I've seen and even produced all the different constantly evolving forms of content. From standard deaf videos, calling the shots, games of scoot, vlogs, reviews, critiques, factory tours, and everything else that had its fair cycle through our community. I will say I am extremely proud of what I've produced here, and I am excited to see the community's reaction to it. Share this video with a friend or via social media, I would very much appreciate it because this is extremely important. The scooter industry right now is stagnant. We are not moving forward. We are spending too much time arguing, bickering, commenting about things that don't concern scootering in the long run. If you like this video, destroy that like button. And once again, thank you so much for listening. I hope you have learned something. It has been your boy, Scooter Brad. And I will catch you guys in the next one.